What I want to do today is just show you a different perspective. Okay? We've been doing a lot of research for the last two years. We've been looking at something that's called the free man um, uh, a position, if you like. And we've been looking at the, uh, a number of different ways, and a lot of people have brought a lot of information over the last two years to this. Um, it's basically a website, would you believe? That's what it is. Well, they brought me, they brought me basically information that I've deciphered and decided to not accept the normal view of things. I've decided to question and question in depth. And this is what you're about to see. As you see this at the moment, this is probably how you would see our country. Actually, I'm going to walk around here because it's easier. So as you would see our country, you would see there's a parliament and then people in that parliament are meant to, meant to represent you because you elect them to do that. That's what you believe. You believe in politics. A lot of people believe in politics. You believe that the, party political, uh, the, par the political parties are elected in power to serve you, to make sure that everything in your country runs right, to make sure you're looked after. You believe that Acts of Parliament, statutes are laws, and you have to abide by these laws. That these laws are statutory instruments, this is how they're enacted. And they're laws as well that you have to abide by. You believe it, most people believe in the, the word a constitution, a constitutional set of laws made up of statutes. And you, people say to me, society's broken. Well, what I'm going to tell you today is it's not broken. It works exactly the way it was planned to work. Because this goes back hundreds of years. This is not something that's new. And there's courts of justice. How many people in this room have suffered at the hands of the courts of justice where injustice is actually happening? What I'm going to tell you today is that the members of parliament are actually directors of a corporation. That is what you're electing. And because you're only electing directors of a part, uh, corporation, nothing will ever change. It will go in the same direction forever. Because politics is not what you think it is. The members of parliament, anybody seen this before? This is Dun & Bradstreet. Do you know what Dun & Bradstreet is? Right. <laughs> if you were going to do business with a corporation or a company in the world, then you can use Dun & Bradstreet, which at the moment is about 160 million corporations worldwide. You can use these to find out if that corporation does good business. Does it have any debts? Has it got any uh, county court judgments against it? So what this is, is a register of corporations, of companies. And the members of parliament are a company. Gordon Brown is a company. David Cameron is a company. And this one I like. The Labour Party trade as Alistair Darling MP. <laughs> it's their trading name. It's just there. The reason they trade with Alistair Darling MP is because Alistair Darling is a diplomat. There's about three of them. If they trade in his name, that trading name has diplomatic status. That means they can bend things and do things that you don't know about. It's a whole different way of doing things. This is what politics is about. This is what you believe to be the people representing you are doing, but they're not. This is what they do. So we look at politics as pertaining policy, an administration of a government, a plan or a course of action, also defined as a political party, corporation, written co co contract or a certificate of insurance. Acts of Parliament become statutes, primary legislation. You know what legislation is? You've heard this word, yeah? No? <laughs> In turn, are enacted, enforced by statutory instruments, which are secondary legislation. Council tax is a statutory instrument enacted on the 1st of April 1993 under the primary legislation, the Local Government Finance Act of 1992. But when we look at a statutory instrument, we find it's a created, written, legal contract. It's not law. Where does it say it's law? Can you see it? 
Society. So we're going to look at society and the contracts. Society, the socially dominant members of a community. Does this country have a socially dominant element who want to stay socially dominant? Right. It is a number of persons united by mutual consent in order to deliberate, determine and jointly act for a common purpose. Does that ring any bells? <laughs> Contract is an agreement between two or more persons that creates or modifies an existing relationship. Offer, consideration and acceptance must be, for a, be there or exist for a contract to be made. Then we look at a constitution, the fundamental rules, written or unwritten, which John explains earlier, that establishes the character of a government by defining the basic principles society must conform to. Do you have to conform to things? Do you? Do you pay tax? Oh, you don't. <laughs> Join the club. <laughs> you were not given a choice if you wanted to join this society. It was made for you at the time when you could not express a choice. So when we look at the word statute, I know I like this one. A legislative rule of society given the force of law by the consent of the governed. And I ask you please, if you could explain to me where in that definition taken from Black's Law Dictionary that that says that statute is law. The force of law, but it's not law. Right. I will get to that, not quite yet, but I will get to it. <laughs> From the neutral, you must, everybody must know this word status. Is what our society, what does it rely on? Status. Yeah? That's what we want to do, don't we? We want to be better in status. More money, bigger car, bigger this, bigger that, better in next door neighbour. That's the word, status. And it all comes from this. Status is the legal character of a condition or condition of a person or a thing. It's not real. It's imaginary. Okay? Completely imaginary. And the definition it actually shows that it's not law. It's only given, it's given the force of law, which means it will apply to you if you consent. What does the word consent mean? Exactly. So what happens when you don't agree? It isn't law. Can't be given the force of law. By its own definition, it only applies to a person and not a man or a woman. How many people in the audience today think they're a person? Oh, come on. Yeah, right. <laughs> The United Kingdom is a corporation. Now, up till February of last year, it was United Kingdom PLC. In February, and it's dissolved, and they've never, ever published their accounts. If you want to check that out, go on Companies House, because it's there. But on Dun & Bradstreet, they're now registered as United Kingdom Corporation Limited. Any corporation has employees. The employees are not just civil servants, they're all of you. Every one of you. If you have a national insurance number, that means you too are an employee. Com company policy of this corporation requires you as an employee to pay tax, follow all the legislative rules of that corporation, in this case, statutes. As in any company, if you break the rules, you will be disciplined under company, that company's legislation. The police of the United Kingdom Corporation are all companies too. Run for profit. Because that's what companies basically do. They run for profit. And who are they making profit for? Directors, shareholders, they all want a profit. And where does that profit come from? 
<laughs> the corporate poli policy enforcement officers, their job is to enforce the rules of the corporation. The courts of the United Kingdom Corporation are all companies run for profit as well. If you break the rules, you will, be, you will get an invite, which is a summons. You will there to their place of business to discuss your punishment. Except that they are not inviting you. You just think they are. Even the highest court in the land is a corporation, the House of Lords. So, we believe that the courts are issuing us justice. We believe that we're going to get a lawful trial. There is a massive difference between lawful and legal. Massive difference. You like this picture? This is very, very important. I want to explain something. During my life growing up, I am a, I am a fully fledged carpenter as well. Um, and that's all I do. I'm just a working class man. All through my life, I was, I was a bit of a bugger when I was young, to, to say the least. And there was a, a policeman called Mick Reed, who was a very dear friend of mine, who helped me incredibly when I was young. Because when I was growing up, I didn't fit into anything. I didn't fit into any group or I didn't fit a slot. I always questioned everything. And I questioned discipline. I questioned authority. If I thought it was wrong. And I suffered for it as well, many, many times. But Mick showed me that there is what a real policeman's about. And this is where this comes from. This is where I understand this now. A policeman, a human being, his duty under common law of this land is to serve and protect every individual in this land. You've heard Albert say this today. That is his duty. That is what he does his job for, to serve and protect and never, ever delay right or justice to any individual in this land. That's their job. They must uphold the common law. But they have a fiction attached to them called a police officer. Now, if you look at the word officer, it comes from the corporate world. What's a CEO? Chief Executive Officer. It's all officers. They're all, they're unbelievable. This man on my right is who enforces statutes on you. This man protects you. But the trouble is, the boys in blue, who I have all the admiration in the world for, because I've got a lot of friends in the police force, don't know the difference. They don't know the difference anymore. And some of them didn't know the difference in the first place because they're being told wrong. They're not being told about this bit, they're only being told about this bit. And funny enough, I had a conversation with Albert the other day and he was telling me some things that are going on in the police force regarding their training at the moment. And all of them are being trained to be this. Okay? So when when you meet these people, what we're trying to do is, I wouldn't say educate them, we're trying to, make, try to bring them to an understanding of what they really are and what they're supposed to do. And I recently, same as Albert did, I went for a police force from down the bottom to a chief inspector, a major chief inspector, overall statutory legislation and you go back to common law. Anybody can do it. You've just got to know the language to speak because there's a language they're using against you that you do not understand. You might think you do because it's English, but it's their language. It's called legal lease. It's the language of the law society. Any society, I'll go into this in a bit, but any society, you can start a society tomorrow and create your own language. Anybody can do it. So we need to just gently tell these people. Now, we have methods of talking to these people that sometimes prevents us being dragged down ourselves. And I will be going into that. But it doesn't always work. Because if they're going to slap the cuffs off you and drag you away, they're going to do it. Okay? And you might as well just make it easy, but always let them know that you are protesting. Peacefully. No violence. No violence whatsoever. This is not about violence. It's a bit like Gandhi said, an eye for an eye just ends up with the well-being all blind. 
I want you to watch this little video. And the man who made this video is actually up there. <laughs> Can I help you? What? Can I help you? Put the camera down for us, mate. What? Whoa, 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 whoa. I'm in my own garden here, mate. Okay. Well, you come bursting down. Are you down. filming the police? Fence. It's not an offence at all. It is, sir. It is. No, it's not an offence at all. No, I'm a filmmaker, mate. I know the laws. I've been doing this for years, mate. I film the police all the time. It's not an offence. Okay. We're telling you... What, what, what section is it of the offence under? It's an offence, what, what section is an offence oh, under? I'll find out for you. Can you switch the camera off? No, I can't switch my camera off. It gets better. I promise you, it gets better. If you can't read it, I will explain it after. I'm not doing nothing wrong. I'm in my own garden. You've come round our path. I do this all the time, mate. Get the mobile phone, Mr. Lister. Mate, this is a free country. <laughs> You're titled by law, yeah? Yeah, he's in his own garden, minding his own business, and the police have just come over here intruding on my privacy, my liberty, my freedom. It's not illegal. I do this all the time, I film the police all the time down here, I film the inspector at the, the meetings, mate. Just I think you've got it long. What's your name? Sorry, sir. No, I'm gonna, I'll do it. Oh, I think it's you've easy. got it wrong, right? What's and and what I, you it's know what you ought to do, mate? Like, no, you know, you know what you ought to do? If you don't like me filming you, you do what I do. You go to see the MPs, yeah, and get them to bring it up in Parliament so we can change the laws. But don't come and harass me over it. Sorry, sir. It, it doesn't matter who I am, mate, you know? You know, number 58. You know? I'm not doing anything wrong at all, mate. Nothing wrong at all. You just, you just took it on your own head to come over and harass me, you know? This is England, mate, you know? <laughs> this, isn't, this isn't communist China, you know that, mate, don't you? <laughs> That was a blind about it. <laughs> yeah, it's not an offence, mate, see? We can more pick that up than your ears. I said we can more pick it up better than his ears. It doesn't matter. What do you mean? It doesn't matter. You're just trying to make an issue here, and I'm not biting for you. I'm not doing anything wrong. I'm not doing anything wrong. It doesn't matter. I'm not doing anything wrong. I haven't done anything wrong. What are you trying to make an issue for? I've not broken no laws. You come over here harassing us, mate. Thank you. Have a nice day. <laughs> Thank you, Darren, for that. Just as this plays out, I'll explain what actually went on there. Um, actually, I'll get this to stop. Oh, actually, you don't need to see that yet. Oh, huh, well you can actually. Right, just to let you know, all the police, I said all the police are registered corporations. City of London, police up the top here, are registered. Northumberland, Gwent Constabulary, also trading as Gwent Police Authority. So they're trading. Okay? They're trading. So that means they're companies who are trading for profit. But they need to generate that profit. 
And how they generate that profit is enforcing statutes on you. That's how they do it. Not law. It's policy. What you saw there in that video was two police officers trying to get a man to give his name and his address. Because in the world of a police officer, they can only act on you if you contract with them. Because it's the world of contracts. Remember, the statutory instrument is a legally written, created, written docu uh, contract. So they're contracts. He needs you to give your name and your address because he needs to act on your person. Not the man or the woman. Darren, who would admit it as well, we stood up there, didn't actually know what he was doing at that time. And he's laughing his head off because he didn't. But the point is, this is natural. It's inherent. It's already in you. You've just been conditioned to not know it. That's all that's happened. When Darren wouldn't conform, what did the lady officer try and do? She tried to speak pick a spoil with him over any issue she possibly could find to try and enforce a statute. Now that is not a policeman or woman. That is not upholding the law of this land, the real law of this land. Okay, that is a corporate enforcement policy agent. So you now understand there is a big difference between the two, a massive difference. And they are, I promise you, you can check this out yourself, you can go and do all this stuff, and if you know it's at the top, it says company search results. This is not saying I've just made up on, I couldn't even if I tried. So what is legal lease? It's a language that can be, a language can be created by any society. Corporation can be such a society. Legal lease is such a language. In English, it is English, but some words have very, very different meanings. Example, legalese is the language of the law society. Check it out for yourselves. One of the things I was going to say before I come on and I forgot is to say to you, do not take a word I'm saying as being the truth. Don't. Go and look at this stuff yourself, because that's the only way that you will suddenly realise what's going on. The truth is only the truth when you know, when you realise it. I could tell you all afternoon long, but until you realise it, it's meaningless. It's down to you to realise this. The examples. Must is synonymous with the word may. When someone says to you from a corporation, you must, they're actually giving you a choice because they can't force you. They're not allowed to because it's not law. It's only policy. Summons is synonymous with invitation. When you get a summons from a court of supposedly law, you actually are being invited to a corporate place of business to discuss how much money you're going to give that corporate place of business. And you won't get an eight for it either. <laughs> understand is synonymous with stand under. If I say to you, do you understand, and you say yes, that means you stand under me, which means you've given me authority over you. It's as simple as that. It's so simple. But this is a language you don't know. You don't know you've been spoken to by this language. Ministry of Justice, also traded as every magistrate's court in this land. The High Court of Judicia. Magist all of them, every single one, is a corporation running for profit. Know who you are. If you go to court, which I've uh, had a few um, accountants with, to say the least, <laughs> it's a corporate place of business. And they will immediately ask you for your name. Okay? Your name. They will even presume to know who you are. And they will ask you as such. They would say to me, Mr. Harris, Mr. is the title of something with legal personality. Status. I was named by my parents, but I wasn't called Mr. John Harris. Well, I don't think so. If I reply yes, guess what I've agreed to represent? A man cannot be acted upon by statutes. 
No one's got a woman, a human being, a living soul. These only apply to the fictional entity, which is the legal personality, i.e. Mr. John Harris in full caps, or Mr. J. Harris. Every title in this land is a fiction. If you're Lord whatever, it's a fiction. Every title is a fiction. Because it doesn't apply to a human being. It's the legal status. Remember the word status? It comes into everything. I like the, do you like the pictures? Photocopied as well. Right. It's the easiest way of doing it, because it, I wanted a cardboard cutout so I can say, look, this is the fiction and this is the living soul, because it's hard for you to grasp that there is, you're, you're two, you're two people. You just don't know you are. That's really, really hard to, sorry, really, really hard to um, grasp. Natural law and common law applies to me. Okay? Inherent law. You don't need him to be told it. You know what's right or wrong. Do you not? You know, don't you? It's inherent. It's just there. Commercial policy, civil policy and political policy applies to the fiction, but they need that to represent it, because that doesn't exist. In the real world, if you, if you want to, if you, yeah, there's an easy way of breaking this down. If you look at a company, a company exists because a piece of paper says it's a company. But it's not real, is it? It's not in the real world. It's just a piece of paper that says this is a company. Common law, the statute, po rules and policy. I like this. The only basic principles that any people of any nation need to adhere to are those of natural law, which are mirrored in common law, never harm or cause loss. It covers every eventuality. There is nothing it doesn't cover. Nothing. Common law applies to a man or a woman, a living soul. Statute rules apply to the person. Only when the man or woman consents to represent the person. Consent can be given in inaction or action. And I'll explain that in a little bit. Within statute rules, you will, you will just receive a summary judgment. That's what you get in the courts of law, or supposedly. But it's called summary judgment. And what summary judgment is, it doesn't matter if whatever court you go into, as long as that court's going to make money from someone, because that's all it's about. And there's a reason they want to extract that revenue from you. There is a, such a reason. You break the rules of the contract and you lose. It's as simple as that. You are a man or a woman, you have a person. My name is John Harris, or John, or my wife calls me lots of other names, but there you go. Um, I shan't discuss them. I exist naturally. Okay? I'm here. I'm real. I was created by divine, whatever you want to call it. I don't want to get into any of this sort of... Um, I, I, I don't know what it is, so I just say divine. It's the easiest way. But I was created. I'm subject to common law jurisdiction. Do, you know, and do, you want, do we know what jurisdiction means? Well, jurisdiction basically means juris is of law, and diction means the use of words in any way you want to use them, basically. I must never harm another or cause another loss, any form of loss. I'm free and unlimited ability to contract and settle debt in private and under commercial law. I can basically do as I please as long as I abide by these principles. My person that's attached to me is Mr J Harris, who's a fictional entity created by the government. Subject to civil policy jurisdiction, must fulfil all duties given to to and governed by corporate policy, tax, etc., under statute. Does business in the public sector, or I don't. So, what is a person? Okay. They're inviting a person created by the United Kingdom Corporation. They created something when you were born. You just didn't know because you couldn't know. Your parents didn't know, and their parents before them didn't know because it's been hidden from you. Because it's too simple. That's the point. Our world is so bloody complicated. But it's not complicated. Everything complicated has a very, very simple foundation. Everything. I'm just simple. I just look at things simply. 
Your person was created when your birth was registered and evidenced by your birth certificate. Man created government, which in turn created persons. Your person is not you. It is a legal fiction which you are falsely identifying with because you've been deceived. Massively. You don't get to say what its rights and duties are. The United Kingdom Corporation does. Like I said, you've been misled and you've been deceived. Let's define the word person. Includes natural person, firm co-partnership, association, limited, limited, limited liability company or corporation, legal personality. Well, I've got, I've got a problem with this. First off, was the first one we had was, was how can you define person with exactly the same word because you're failing to define anything? And this is in Black's Law Dictionary, eight. If you look at person in Black's Law Dictionary 3, you'll see it's a fiction. As she says it, it's a fiction. Because it's not real. It's not real. And what, I, I want to ask a question as well. Why would you need eight revisions of one dictionary of law? For what possible reason? Why would the words change? But why would they change? A word means something and it never changes. So if it's being changed, it's being changed for a reason. The creation of the person. When you were born, you, your mother, father, submitted a birth certificate registration application form. In the formulation of any limited company corporation, there is always a certificate of registration to create its legal personality. Your fictional person, known by Mr, Mrs, or blah, 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 you can see it up there, is created by the same means. So, this is interesting as well. People are like, oh, I couldn't believe this. When I actually found out, and this comes from Rob Bernard. Do, do we know Rob Bernard is? Really? Yeah, 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 good. I'm glad. Right. When you submit, you are bending to another's will. Okay? So you're bending, you're agreeing to bend to their will. When you register, you are handing over title ownership of whatever you're registering to whoever you are registering it to. You actually physically hand this over. And in doing this, you acknowledge the transferring of that authority. When you apply, it actually means you're begging. And when you beg, it's assumed you know what you're begging for and you know what you're going to give up. That's what this means. Most of the time, you actually volunteer an application. You actually volunteer. You're not made to do it. Did I make you get a credit card? But you submit an application. Everything in this, the whole world is created, it runs on submitting applications for this, submitting applications for that. I can't, I'm waiting for health and safety to say I can't put a pencil behind me because I'll get a splinter. <laughs> but it's going to come, and you know it's coming. <laughs> you know. <laughs> That's why you're laughing. Right, this is the document. This is unbelievable. Right, this is, you've, you've all seen this, yeah? You know what this is, yeah? Birth certificate. Right. You get a certified copy, you do not get the original. Because that goes somewhere else. This up here, when you actually look at this, you, you look at this and you get your own. When you get home, or, get, or you get your kids, whatever, get this document and look at it. Because it's phenomenal what they've done. The name of the person's being created in capitalised surname. See, the surnames are capitals, okay? It's a fiction. This is being created. That fiction is going to be created there. But what they need is, they need another fiction to do it. They have to have a fiction there to do this. Who is the informant? You actually inform on your own children. Do you know that? You inform on them. It's brilliant, isn't it? Eh? And your qualification is, you're one of their parents. Mad. Mad. And it's capitalised, it's all capitalised. And it is absolutely true. Look at your birth certificate, informant, the qualification needed, and it will say needed, 
and you inform because you are the father or the mother. What you don't know is that at the bottom there is a declaration. Now, a declaration is in common law. A declaration is a sworn oath of a man or a woman. And there's a reason that's on the bottom. Because without that man or woman being present, the fictionous mother or father isn't present. Now you're seeing that the person is attached to the human being. But to do this, they need the human being to be there. That's why there's a declaration at the bottom of it. And this, it says it quite simply. It, you, you have to be present to represent the person needed to create the new person's legal personality. I know it's a tongue, it, 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 believe me, I, it's mind-boggling, but it's, it really is. This is what we found, and it all makes sense. That's the point. This is what I want to tell you about it. And then you register it to a corporation. <laughs> the General Register Office. Get your birth stiff, get and lift it up, and you'll see G-R-O. It's the General Register Office. That's who you're registering it to. Registration and your children. And this is not funny. This is really, really true. Okay? To this day, registration still means the same thing. You hand over or you transfer the legal title to the body you have registered it with. As you have seen, the worst possible way this has been done is by the birth certificate. It's been abused. A simple show of this is to... Do you have to mandatory school with your children? Well, you do. And can you take them on holiday when you want to? No. Because what happens when you take them out of term time? I know people have received £100 fines for taking their kids out of term time, taking them on holiday. And they have to be vaccinated. The thing is, it's their property. You signed over title ownership of that child to the government when you registered it. You don't, you've got no claim to your children whatsoever. You just don't know it because you've been duped. If you want proof of it, the social services. What happens when you don't look after their property or they pertain you on not looking after their property properly? Linda Lewis, baby P. What happens? They take the child away. And not all children are taken away because the child is in danger. Do not believe that for a second. Do not believe the propaganda because it's not true. And my friend down there, Mr Gerrish, can prove this many, many times. Well, what you'll notice is it says social services PLC because it is a PLC. And a PLC is a public limited company that has shareholders. And shareholders need profits. And where do they get profit from? Stealing children. I couldn't believe this when I found it. I was stunned. Brian's been telling me this for, for 18 months. And I couldn't believe it because I couldn't see any facts and I only deal with facts. I deal with black and white, right or wrong. There's no in-betweens. Something's right or it's wrong. And this is fact and it makes sense. I want to prove it as well. Consider this. Could the government lawfully take your car and crush it if you owned it. Right. When you register your vehicle, you hand over the ownership, title ownership of that vehicle to the government. You get a V5 document and it's the registered keeper. Look on anyone, registered keeper. If you look on the advert that's on the telly, and they crush the car in front of the two, uh, the couple just come back from wherever they come back, and the car crushes up in front of them. The voice says, we have a legal right to do this. But it doesn't say, we have a lawful right to do this. Because they haven't got a lawful right to do it. They've just duped you into giving your property to them so they can crush it when you don't put bloody tax on it. Incredible, incredible. Basically, as well, when you do this, you, when you register it, as stated, because it is stated, you agree to abide by their rules. MOT, certificate, road tax, and, fuel, and the fuel levy um, tax as well. You agree to this. This is what you agree to because it's part of the deal. 
and then you register it to another corporation. Please remember this. Please, please remember this in future. When you register something, anything, you give up ownership of it. Your house, your car, your children, whatever it is, you give up ownership of it. I know you shouldn't own your children, and you don't, but your children are your children. And no one has the right to take that child away from you. No one. You get a certificate of title, and it's worthless. It's not worth the paper it's written on. Fixed penalty notices. So why are there so many fixed penalty notices? You get a fine for filling your bin up too much, or putting it out on the wrong day, or sticking it in the wrong position. Speed cameras, SORM documents. Well, what are these notices in the real world? They've been issued by corporations. And the corporations are dreaming up more and more reasons for penalising you. Penalised by the weight of forfeit. Something surrendered, subject to surrender as punishment for a breach of contract. These are called adhesion contracts. An adhesion contract is a type of contract that is legal and binding agreement that someone writes, makes it their, they basically do as they please. They've got all the bargaining power, they attach it to you, and it's to their advantage. A notice is not a bill. A notice is not a demand. If you went to a restaurant and the waiter come up and said, that's £60 for your meal and I serve you notice, what would you do? Pay or ask for a bill? Well, you'd pay then, obviously. You ask for a bill. Have you ever thought about actually asking the council, can I have a bill, please, for my council tax? Because you've never actually sent me one. This is simply a tool of revenue collection. And the true reason this is being forced upon you is because your person is simply to maintain the illusion that they have control over your life, your fortune and your freedom. Because your fear and their ability to take from you something you deem to be valuable. And that is money. Yeah? Do we all believe money is valuable? We all use it every day, don't we? Yeah? And we all believe it's got some worth. These pieces of papers and coin has some worth. Because you can take it somewhere and someone will give you services for it. I shouldn't have said it that way, should I? <laughs> um, you can buy things for it or you can trade it everywhere. You, you, you believe it's valuable. But have you ever asked yourself this? Have you ever asked this? One, it's all in capitals, so it's again the fictional world, but have you ever asked? 20 pounds of what? <laughs> it's true though, isn't it? Of what? Go and ask the Bank of England, you'll get kicked out. It happened to a friend of mine. Serious. This is the real truth. You're the currency, not money. You are. Because without you, this country grinds to a halt. Because the principal workforce of any machine or any corporation or any company are slaves. And they have to give you something to believe in so you will do that work and you will not question. And to make it valuable, they're going to stiff you with as many fines that are make-believe to make you give over that worthless piece of paper to another corporation just so you believe it's real. No? This is what I entered into. Some of you might know what I'd done. A friend of mine, Robin, who sat in the audience, gave me some information once. And funny enough, another gentleman who sat in the audience gave me the same information. And I looked at it, 
and it's called Lawful Rebellion. It's actually wrote in Magna Carta 1215, it's Article 61. Now, I know a lot about Magna Carta now, and I know that Magna Carta certainly wasn't right for us. And we've got no, we can't use it. We can't use it. But we can use the method of lawful rebellion, because lawful rebellion says, and what Article 61 actually says, it says, lawfully hinder, and it says, you never, must never ever use violence. We can't sort this out with violence. Because if we sort this out with violence, violence will always ensue. We have to do this peacefully. And the way we do it peacefully is learning the rules of the game. So when these people come to us, not only, you've got to understand this, th there's people out there who are working in all walks of these corporations who know there's something very wrong, they don't know what it is, they're trying to do something about it, and they can't do something about it until they have the knowledge to be able to do something. And we need to give these people that knowledge. Every single time you write to the tax office and you tell them I'm not paying because, you, well, what do you want me to pay with? What's it worth? Ask the tax office what, what they want you to pay. And say to them, what's it worth? You want me to give you a worthless piece of paper? The tax office, you, these people need to be educated. They need to learn this. The police, the courts, the judges, the politicians. There's politicians down there who don't know, even know about this. So what we do is, whenever you're stopped by one of these individuals, Ask them this, am I obliged to ask you your questions? Because they won't know what the word obliged means. They won't know what it means. And it's a choice. It's a choice. And then ask them, under what authority and under what law yeah, are you acting? The reason being is because if they say to you, it's under this law, and then they suddenly say, and you prove it's a statute, an act of parliament, that says it in itself. An act. Parliament, that's all it is. It's theatre. It's an act. Shakespeare said it, the world's a stage. And we're all acting. Absolutely true. But when you say to these people, you can actually say this, and this is absolute fact, because I'm just about to do this to the Chief Constable of Devon and Cornwall Police. Failure to differentiate between a statute and a law is gross negligence that's equivalent to the common law offend, uh, uh, crime of fraud. They're committing fraud. They've committed fraud on you from the day you were born. This applies to anyone who is trying to enforce these statutes. You are a man or a woman. You are not a person. You are not a person. The legal world is the same as your person. It is a fiction. It's an illusion. It is not real. You just believe it is. Because you've been duped. And they've made it so bloody complicated. But it's not complicated. Because it doesn't exist. It's not real. The corporate employees must get a man or a woman to represent the person before a contract can be formed. That's absolutely true. They will ask you your name, they'll ask you your address. When they get your address, they've got joined up. Because I could be, there could be 100,000 John Harris's in England. They need that address to get joined up so they can prove who you are. The second you do that, the human being has said, yes, I'm the person. Remember, there is no justice in this country and there isn't any justice in this country. I see it daily. I have people contact me. I hear the most sad stories. I know a lady sat in the office, uh, the office, the audience, who is, I know that her story is incredibly sad about her dad. And I've listened to it, and I want to help her, and I can't help her. Not at this moment. But I have a way of doing it, though. There is no justice, you will only ever receive summary judgment. They just want to extract money from you, because they want you to still believe that this stuff's real. For every court, even the highest court on the land is a profit-making corporation, and it runs under the United Kingdom Corporation. This is the only way you can do it, and I'm not asking anybody to do this. I've never asked anybody to do anything that I do. I want to save my country. I don't want to save this country, in fact. I want to save this island. Why have we got borders? 
Why do the English hate the Scottish or the other way around? Why do the Welsh? Why have we got borders? Because we've been divided. Because when we're divided, we can't unite. We've been divided by languages. Political parties were designed to divide people. The only way to get rid of this once and for all is to sacrifice the person. To sacrifice the person is to remove that person completely. That means the birth certificate has to be destroyed. And it can be done. I've seen a way of doing it. Massive implications, but it can be done. And I am going to do it. Because I am not living in this society one minute longer than I have to and watch my fellow human beings suffer under it. I will find a way to get out of this and I will succeed. The reason being is because what I'm doing is right. It breaks my heart. I could wait for the world. And if anybody ever tells you that a grown man can't cry, yes he can. Thank you. It's just so